as the drizzle starts, it is a perfect time to tackle this subject. Uh, I mentioned in one of the previous videos that something that is, is really nice about my channel at this point is that it's small enough that if people ask a question in the comments, uh, it can easily and relatively quickly lead to a video. And that's what I want to do today. I had someone in the comments ask me about the apps that I use when I'm prepping for a trip, be it uh, a day trip, a weekend trip, or something longer. So let's take a couple minutes and talk about the apps that I'm using uh, and how I use them to plan trips. Let's go. Okay, so as I pull up my phone and start looking at apps, I have um, apps broken out into two different folders. One folder is weather, the other folder is just called outdoors. We're going to spend the most time talking about weather um, because that, when I'm planning a trip, is where I spend most of my time. The app that I use more than anything on almost a daily basis is called Dark Sky. Um, this was a little tiny independent company that created an app. It's what's called a micro weather app. It is very localized weather data and will tell you things like uh, rain starting in five minutes, stopping 15 minutes later. And it's either super accurate, super usable, or so wrong you know not to believe it. I will say Apple bought this company a few years ago and the app has not been as good since they bought it. That might just be some form of bias, but that's what it seems like. It seems like it used to be a better app. Um, primarily I am using the hourly breakdown and the you know coming hour this is what's what you're going to see in the next hour oh it's great to see that like oh at two o'clock i want to be getting on the water and the and it, it's going to have stopped raining by then that's primarily how i use it i did want to use it teaching a class outdoors but we were under a shelter uh and i used it to be like okay we're going to go outside because it's going to stop raining for 15 minutes and we're going to do this exercise and then we're going to go back under the shelter and it worked beautifully it was one of those days where it was spot on worked really well okay that's for day trips that's generally what i'm looking at for day trips for multi-day trips I generally don't trust real weather reports more than 48 hours out. So like the next 48 hours is generally pretty believable, but beyond that, there's too many variables in weather prediction. I don't buy it. But what I will use is an app called My Radar. Um, and the nice thing about this for me on the East Coast of the United States, most of my weather is coming from the South and the West, primarily the West, but sometimes from the South. And to be able to be like, oh, yeah, right now in Western North Carolina, it's pouring rain. That's probably going to hit me at some point in the next two, three, four days. That's really good to, to know. So I use uh, my radar pretty frequently, and that works really well for me. The other app that I use is um, just the straight up weather app. If I want to see a multi-day trend, that works really well. Um, just the straight up regular weather app that comes on your iPhone. I don't know what if it's there's something similar for Android, but this is all iPhone based. Oh, I should say Dark Sky used to be multi-platform. And but when Apple bought it, they made it Apple only, which kind of sucks. Shame on you, Apple. I have a heat index app because when I worked for REI Outdoor School, we used heat index as the guideline. Above this heat index, you have to do this. Above this heat index, you have to cancel class. I don't use that that much, which is why on my iPhone, it needs to be re-downloaded. Okay, the other app that I use a lot is debatable as to whether or not it's a weather app, but it's in my weather folder, is Multitide. So Multitide works really well. Essentially, it brings up a map. You bring up a map, you tell it to search for nearby uh, tide stations and you get your tide information. So you hit nearby, I'm gonna hit Lafayette River, and it gives you a breakdown of low tide, sunrise, moonrise, high tide, low tide, sunset, moonset. Or if you turn it sideways, which works better for me, it becomes a visual graph of what your tides are doing. And then you can scroll to anywhere on the screen to see what the tide cycle is at whatever time you press. That works really well for me. Another app that I use frequently uh, that is a weather app is Windy, which is just giving me wind information. When I'm sailing, that's of course super useful, 
but when I am paddling, it's equally useful because I don't want to deal with big winds when I'm paddling. Um, Windy is without a doubt my favorite wind-specific prediction app, and it does a lot of other things, but I really like the aspect of how precise it is, where the wind is coming from, where the wind is going to be coming from in two hours is really nice. Um, so works really well. Love that app. Windy is an awesome app. Those are the apps that I use most often. Now, if I'm doing like a 10 day trip, I probably won't have cell service. So I'm gonna download from the NOAA's website, um, tide charts based on my location, and I may grab it from tide stations uh, a couple different places so I get a picture of what the tides are doing all over the coast that I'm paddling. Um, those are the apps that I use most often. In my outdoors folder, I have Garmin and a Starlight app to help you see what constellations you've got. The next tool that I use in terms of weather is my watch. My watch has a barometer on it, um, and that's really why I bought it. It's an ABC watch, altimeter barometer compass. And the thing about barometers that is useful for me as a paddler is it is showing very localized weather information. Um, and so if I'm about to start a crossing or if I'm just getting on the water um, and I look at my barometer and it's showing a decrease in barometric pressure and it has for a while, that is generally an indicator that bad weather is coming. So I may not want to do those two things. Um, Likewise, I could also see an increasing pressure trend, which means good weather is coming. And so it's just a very easy way without needing cell service or anything like that to get an idea as to what the very localized weather is doing. Um, so I am a big fan of checking a barometer throughout the course of the day and seeing what that's doing. Big, big fan of a barometer on my wrist. One more thing I wanna add here is something that I don't have but that I would consider getting, and it's this. If you have a Garmin inReach in its various forms, the inReach, the inReach Mini, the 66i, which is a handheld GPS with inReach functionality, if you have that, you can pay for a weather service where it will send you weather updates via satellite, and I think that is a really cool thing. And if I were doing a multi-day trip on a coast where I didn't have VHF and I didn't have sail, I would consider it. If I were doing an Atlantic crossing in a sailboat, which is something I really want to do, um, I would probably pay for a device and that service. So that is a really good way to get weather via satellite. I know there are other services like that that sailors use, but they're generally not hooked up to devices that are uh, easy for paddlers or backpackers to use, whereas a handheld device like an inReach absolutely is. Just wanted to add that. Let's get back to the video. All of these apps are great. Even the barometer is great and make things easy, simple, predictable. But the most important thing is that you have to build up an understanding of what the environment around you looks like and what it looks like before it does bad things. So like learn to understand what clouds are rain clouds. Learn to understand what it looks like before you're going to get thunder and lightning. Um, that way, even without these tools, while you're paddling or doing anything in the outdoors, you have a good idea as to what to expect for the coming time. You've got to build those skills in terms of what's going on around you without the crutch of, an, of a phone or even a barometer. Okay, that's all I've got for today. Play with these things in the outdoors, pay attention to your environment, learn what clouds should look like and should not look like, and I'll see you on the water.